What does this painting have in common with the previous painting in the last video, Echo of a Scream? Well, both are the kind of pictures we call a landscape. Both contain rubbish and ruin and waste and destruction. So we've got mechanical waste objects in one versus broken Roman statues and buildings in this one. But how do we know that's Roman architecture and not Greek architecture? Well, those are Corinthian columns. They're not Ionic or Doric columns. So that's really something we have to be aware of in order to fully perceive what's going on here. So the comparison is we've got a junk urban environment and we've got the ruins of a classical civilization. We've also got in both faces distortion and both convey a sense of horror, both paintings convey a sense of horror, suffering, pain, and misery. You got the cripple in the lower left, you got guys in black shirts beating up ordinary citizens in the center. So we've got similar ingredients in these two paintings, but do you have a similar reaction to each painting? Why not? Somehow the horror and the misery don't reach out and grab us in quite the same way. What about the distorted jack-in-the-box face? How does that work on our emotions? It's grotesque, but not shocking pompous and egotistical, but probably doesn't invite our sympathy. This distortion, as compared to Echo of a Scream, is more playful, more humorous. It's making fun of someone. Is the artist making fun of the baby? So both artists distort the natural features of their figures, but the emotional effects are quite different. Does it help us respond to the painting if we know the following? First of all, that it was painted in 1937. Well, we need to know what was happening politically in 1937. There was about to be a war between the fascist nations of Italy and Germany and the democratic nations of Europe and America. The jack-in-the-box figure is Mussolini. Mussolini was the leader of Italy. He was a dictator. His face is recognizable to those who know political events, current events, know the past history. And thirdly, uh, Eternal City, the title of this uh, uh, painting, is a, is a name reserved for only one city in the world, and that would be Rome. So what principle was Rome founded on? Well, law and order. So if this civilization is in ruins, what principle it has broken down? Does it also help us to know that in the center of the painting is the Roman Senate or Forum? In ancient Rome, that's where lawful affairs of the government took place. So what's happening here? The fascist black shirts, those are Mussolini's bad guys, are beating up Italian citizens. In the last painting, a child was giving birth to himself in the midst of an urban wasteland. In this painting, a dictator is seemingly giving birth to lawlessness and brutality in the midst of the ruins of a fallen civilization which stood for law and order. The figure in the upper left there is Christ, and he's surrounded by symbols of wealth and power, wealth in the form of jewels, power in the form of swords. And where is he located? Where is Christ located in relation to the rest of the picture? Well... He's pushed off to the side, he's behind a brick wall, he's seemingly neglected in the sense of not being involved in what's going on. So in order to fully respond to this painting, we need to know something about the culture of Rome, the political affairs of 1937, and even who Christ was. The artist presupposes either that we already know that background information, or that we're willing to go out and get it. And so to sum up and just sort of give you the takeaway here, knowledge about a work of art can give us knowledge of a work of art. And this is an important principle because it means that we can be educated about what works in a work of art.